<sighs> I couldn't stay away. Hello everyone, K on Gaming HD and welcome to Let's Play number 21 of Cyberpunk 2077 Nomad Route here on the channel. I said I was gonna take a break from this game. I said I was gonna focus on my other Let's Play series here on the channel. And the only Let's Play series I really focused on were Miles Morales and um, Red Dead Redemption 2. But, I kept thinking about this game. I tried to shake it off the best I could, but this game just kept coming back to me and coming back to me and coming back to me. And I decided, you know what? Fuck it. I didn't even do a dice roll for this one. I'm just playing this because this has been on the back of my mind ever since I got done watching the anime. Yes, at the time of me recording this video, I have finished the Cyberpunk Edge Runners anime, all 10 episodes. I can safely say, Cyberpunk Edge Runners, let me mute the music here, that way you guys and gals will be able to hear me a lot better. That music is pretty loud. Okay. Let me just say this real quick, without trying to spoil anything. I don't want to spoil anything regarding the Cyberpunk Edge Runners anime, the anime itself. Those 10 episodes of that anime by Studio Trigger, that to me was one of the best anime series I have ever seen in my life. Now, would I say it's a perfect anime series? No. There are problems with it. There are issues with it. I personally believe that it should have been a little bit longer. It should have been at least 20 episodes. I think what they should have done with this anime is did a season one, which was 10 episodes. And I know you guys and gals want to see me get to the game Cyberpunk 2077. I'll get to it here in just a little bit. And I'm going to try not to go for two hours here like I did the last time. I don't know how long I'm going to go here this time. But hopefully it ain't going to be two hours again. But you never know with this game. But anyways, like I was saying, I personally believe what they should have done with the anime is split it into two seasons. Season 1, 10 episodes. Have a lot of time for character development. A lot more character development. Develop the story a lot, 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 lot more. Incorporate more features from Cyberpunk 2077. Incorporate more lore into the anime. And then season two will be 10 episodes. And I say that comes out in the fall slash winter time of 2023. Basically give it an entire year a build up and also what I would have done instead of dropping all 10 episodes at once I would have done it weekly like what Disney Plus does with their shows like what they're doing with She-Hulk where it's weekly you have to wait an entire week for the new episode I would have done that I would have done 10 consecutive weeks 10 straight episodes of Cyberpunk Edge Runners for season 1 and then when that ends which that would end by Thanksgiving I did the counting on the calendar the anime would be would have been done by Thanksgiving had we done that route. Then you have an entire year to build up for season two. That's what I would have done. But nonetheless, all ten episodes drop. It looks like it's just going to be a one season show. It sucks. I hope for a season two, but they said it's just going to be a one season show for now. They said for now it's going to be a one one and done anime series, which unfortunately really does suck. I love that anime series. I I can't even really talk about it without spoiling anything. It's so hard to talk about it without spoiling anything. Go check it out if you have not seen it. It's on Netflix, obviously. All 10 episodes are available to stream right now. Go watch it if you have not. Hell, watch the whole damn thing in one day. If you got the time, if you don't got nothing to do, 
watch the whole damn thing in one day. Now, I will tell you this. Don't go into this anime expecting it to be the greatest anime of all time. Don't expect it to be, you know, better than Dragon Ball or, or you know, better than Cowboy Bebop or something like that. It does not compare to those animes of the past, to the greatest animes of all time. I'm just saying from my personal standpoint, from my personal taste, this is one of the best animes I have ever seen in my life. I fucking love this anime series. And this anime has rejuvenated the game. It's rejuvenated Cyberpunk 2077. There were 60,000 people playing this game on Steam earlier today. At the time of me recording this, earlier today, 60,000 people were on Steam playing this game. This game is being rejuvenated by that anime. And it fucking upsets me that my friend Orbital Sigma is not able to watch this anime right now. I've already told him, do not watch this anime without me. He already watched the first episode. Stop. Pump, pump the brake. Stop. I want to watch this with you, buddy. I do not want you to watch this by yourself. I want to watch it with you. That way you get to experience it just like I did. What a fucking incredible anime. I mean, if he watches it in his spare time, he watches it in his spare time. I can't stop him from watching it, but me personally... I'd rather me and him watch it together and he sees the entire show for the first time. And he's a lot more critical on anime than I am because he's seen a lot more anime than I have. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he has to say about Cyberpunk Edge Runners. Oh boy. Okay. Enough about the anime. Let's get into the game that's based on the anime. Or the anime that's based on the game. Anime that's based on the game. Game that's based on the anime. It works Howdy, both fucking howdy, ways. Welcome back. My guest tonight is Lieutenant Sarah Kukowski, Also, a lot of TV crazy TV shit TV. happened in the last Let's welcome Play video. Show. And we're not quite done with it just yet. As a matter of fact, we're about to get into some crazy shit as soon as the game loads up. And, I had to get me an energy drink for this Let's Play. Unfortunately, my Walmart did not have a can of regular Monster Energy. I looked everywhere, I looked up and down the aisles, they did not have a single can of regular Monster Energy, unless I wanted to get the big pack for $20, and I'm not paying $20 for Monster Energy. So, I got me the Bex Bex thing, and I got me a can of NOS. I know, not not my favorite energy drink, but good enough nonetheless. It smells good, though. I'll give it that. I like the way the water is, uh ripping down the wall here. Currently raining outside here in Night City. Alright, double life talk to Judy. Oh boy. Let's see what's about to happen here. Judy's apartment. Hmm. I thought that was jellyfish at first. That's an octopus right there. Maybe that is jellyfish. Maybe these are jellyfish. She's sleeping. Okay. Uh, at least I think she is. Her eyes are closed and she's not shaking anymore. I would have already killed her by now if I didn't feel so bad for her. That would be a very bad thing for you to do after everything that we just put ourselves through to save her. Rewiring Signatic Pathways. Let me read this real quick. Chapter 1. The Future of Neurotechnology. Uh, technology, excuse me. The, 20th, the 21st century herald a worldwide revolution in neurotechnology. We as a society can no longer imagine an existence without technologically heightened senses, enhanced memory capacity, and pain modulators. 
By linking our neural system with the computer chips, we are capable of learning complex skill sets in seconds, then subsequently forgetting them again the instant they are removed. Today, after nearly 80 years of increasingly incorporating these technologies into our daily lives, we must now ask ourselves, what comes next? In recent years, the academic community has reunited discussions on possible new methods to influence brain plasti plasticity? Hope I pronounced that correctly? Is it possible to create permanent neural pathways using coprocessors? Can we expect a breakthrough regarding dopaminergenic data manipulation in our lifetimes? Hope I pronounced that correctly. If so, what will be the consequences? The probable emergence of commercially viable artificial neurotransmitters would undoubtedly reshape the health science field, yet will simultaneously introduce a potentially destructive tool to most governments and corporations. The field of plasticity manipulation remains in its infancy, but most experts agree we should prepare for a future in which such neurologically, or ne neurological excuse me, rewiring will become as commonplace as the cybernetic implants used so pervasively today. Studies should begin exploring now how science can adapt our bodies to optimize the effects of the technology while minimizing its abuse and potential unwanted side effects. Hmm. Something to read right here. Thornton, Owner's Manual. Congratulations! You are now the proud owner of a Thornton! Ooh, cool. We are proud to offer our Thornton guarantee for reliability and convenience at an affordable price. Before you embark on a new adventure behind the wheel of your new Thornton, please take the time to read this owner's manual. Table of contents, one, instru instruments and in indicators, two, anti-theft system, three, seats, seat belts and rear view mirrors, four, lights and warning lights, five, starter transmission and brakes, Six, ventilation, heating, and AC. Seven, engine and driving tips. Eight, what to do in an emergency. Nine, maintenance and care. Ten, service and warranty information. Did I just unlock me a new car? Hmm. I thought I did, but nothing popped up saying, you know, car unlocked or anything. That's weird. Got a couple more things to read here. Why be me? Confessions of a brain dance addict. Preface, do you want to be you? Seriously, take a moment to let that question sink in. Do you feel at home in your skin? Do you like your job, your friends, your family? When you look in the mirror, do you say to yourself, I'm the luckiest person alive, then hop in the leather upholstered backseat of your chauffeur, Rayfield? Uh, unfortunately, one, I don't work. Two, the only friends I really talk to are my friend Orbital Sigma and a couple of others that I went to high school with, but a ma large majority of the friends I went to school with, I don't really talk to them anymore, unfortunately. They either moved out of town, they're far, far away, they got families of their own, they are working constantly 24-7. Or, unfortunately, some of them are no longer alive, sadly. As for my family, the only one I really talk to is my mom. I mean, I got a couple of family members on Facebook that I talk to every now and again, but it's, it's kind of rare. Do I consider myself the luckiest person alive? Well... If you want to say that I'm lucky to be alive, then okay. I mean, I, I, I guess I wouldn't consider myself the luckiest person, but I would say that I'm happy to still be here breathing. I'm, I'm happy to have, I guess you could, no, I, I, I'll just go with happy. I'm happy that I have a roof above my head, clothes on my back, that I get food in my stomach. That, you know, I got a PlayStation 4, I got a pretty darn good YouTube channel, could be better, but yeah, uh, it's, it's pretty good right now. If you answered yes to any of those questions, put down this book and stop wasting your valuable time. If you answered no to the above, I understand just how you feel. 
It used to be said at the turn of the century that the world belonged to the 1%. Today, one thousandth of a percent is closer to the truth, and your chances of joining this group are even less than that. I'm not joining the Illuminati. Hell no. Hell no. In this reality, I mean, when you are you, in a brain dance, you could be anyone. A broker who manages a portfolio worth trillions, an elite soldier who blasts his enemies out of existence with a tech shotgun, a suave rocker boy whom the whole world lusts after. Now I ask you again, of the millions upon millions of people in this world, do you want to be you? The answer for me was always no. And so my story begins. Sergio Morales. wonder if he's related to Miles Morales. <laughs> Alright. The Green Death. The weather man peered into the eyes of the young nomad as was trying to divine his thoughts. Don't misunderstand, he said. I don't mind unexpected guests, but you must recognize when a man lives alone in the middle of the desert, he has a right to ask uncomfortable questions. The boy wouldn't make eye contact, instead glancing nervously through the window, as if expecting to spot an armada of battle drones coursing straight for him across the night sky. I... I'm running away, he muttered after a moment of hesitation, from Green Phantom. He's been following me since Yellow Creek. The old man didn't move a muscle, save for a twitch at the corner of his mouth, revealing he knew more than he cared to admit. You have nothing to fear, he said softly. The Green Phantom only comes for the worst criminals. If you hold regret in your heart, he'll forgive you. He'll offer a second chance. I think I might have read this before, but nonetheless, the boy's anxious demeanor suddenly turned to a rebellious grin. I regret... Yeah, I, okay, actually, you know what? I've read this before. I've read this before. If you want to read it, you can pause the video and read it for yourself, but I've read this before in the past. Something right here. What is this? Oh, cocktail. Hold up a sec. Ooh. I'll take that. I'm trying to read that. No, I don't want to talk to Judy right now. I want to pick that up. I want to pick that up. Got it to pop up. Dang it. Fuck it. Oh well. How's she holding How's she up? Feeling? Use your imagination. That place sucked every last drop of humanity from her. It's not enough. She already gave up everything she had. I just kept taking more and more. She's in some kind of trance, like she's folded into herself. No reaction to her surroundings whatsoever. Hmm. I really, Severe case of amnesia? I really didn't want to poke around in her head. I did it for you. I just want you to know that. Okay. Uh, I'm not gonna say you need to talk to her. You're mad at her? Mad at Why? Her? Why? When you asked me to scour her behavioral chip, I was just about done dealing with your shit. Judy, I didn't have any I know. Other... It's okay. So I don't get why... You'll find out in a sec. I'll show you the virtue I found. Okay. How many BDs are there? How many BDs did you manage to rip? Two. Only one of them's intact. Understandable, though. The rest... Well, they're in the same shape as Evelyn right now. Ooh. Guess you them, them already? Yeah. Had to wrestle to make sense of the whole thing. But I don't want to say anything and taint your perspective. You should go in with fresh eyes. Okay, let's see okay. it. Okay. Show me. Give me a sec while I set the parameters. Okay. Guess we'll find out if our doll really did lose her tune. 
We'll find out, Come Johnny. On, v. Well, let me read this real quick. New release brain dances. What's up, BD Maniacs? Hungry for a new emo rush? Then check out the latest word from the freshest BDs on the market. Foreign body. The body is everything. There is nothing else. It is you, but it is also just a tool for your mind to interact with the world. But what would happen if this tool tried to live its own life? What if it tried to kill you? Ooh. Though not a particularly original addition to the thriller genre, this brain dance featuring Luke Polar, hope I pronounced that name correctly, is still a solid experiential ride. The fear of disobedient implants has been around since pirates were walking around on peg legs. Well, maybe not that long. As a result, the trope has been persuasive in film, brain dance, and urban legend alike. Still, foreign body borrow some of the genre's best elements while still incorporating just enough new stuff to the mix to keep it interesting. After all, it's not every day you see the world from the perspective of a sentient arm. No, you do not. Maxwell's Rehab. This brain dance season has been chock full of horror, but this one stands out from the rest. The always phenomenal Maxwell Ramirez is pushed to the brink of cyber psychosis. Oh shit. So we can relive his return to normalcy. The title offers a tone of optimism, but don't let that fool you. You will relive Maxwell's slip into psychosis, the heartbreak of his wife, and the gradual reintegration into a world that is now far different from how he left it. This BD is a must relive of the season, but it's not for the faint of heart. Badlands Raid At last, a BD for those looking for something a little lighter. Badlands Raid is a remake of the 2023 classic which was an innovative tour de force of the time. For those of you unfamiliar, the plot revolves around an ordinary, boring guy who accidentally gets tangled up in a nomad ambush on a Zetatec convoy. I won't spoil it because, even though the main plot hasn't changed in 54 years, most people these days probably don't know the ending. What I will say is this, the remake's creators have introduced a few modern twists into the story that should make for a pleasant surprise to classic lovers and newbies alike. Oh, that's nice to know. I'll be the first to admit, this does not look good. No, it does not. Uh, nah. Not Paint editors and morality rates. Auto save, that's good. Introduction. The implant known widely as the pain editor is cyberware that reduces or even entirely eliminates pain. It has enjoyed unwavering popularity for years among certain circles in Night City, the most devoted and arguably most viable of which is mercenaries. It is using this test group that Zetatec conducted the following research. The pain editor is a neuro coprocessor co -processor that inhibits the signals sent from nociceptors to the parental lobe of the brain thus presenting feelings of pain in the user. Note, some models also reduce symptoms of fatigue. The beneficial effects caused by the pain editor are in some ways similar to the symptoms of hypothalpesia, including greater resistance to physical forms of torture and the ability to ignore pain from severe wounds, which can allow the user to continue to perform beyond normal human limitations for a brief period, basically meaning that you could get shot at. You could literally have your arm blown off by a shotgun, and you won't even fucking feel it. Holy shit. However, some studies have reported that the paint editor can yield a range of undesirable side effects. For example, in the heat of battle, some users are unaware of the severity of their wounds, which causes them to continue fighting without realizing they are dying and require immediate medical attention. The statistics support the theory that a lack of negative reinforcement may cause users to continue fighting when the rational strategy would be to retreat and escape death. Since 2020, that would be two years ago IRL time, the morality rate of pain editor owners is above 60%. In this report, I address the question of how to better protect Zetatec clients from avoidable death while using our pain editors. Okay. Bingo. Ooh. There's a lot of stuff to read in here. 
Many people believe we live in a time when impossible has become an absolute had become an obsolete term, excuse me. Ripper DOS can replace nearly any part of the human body with artificial implants, from your big toe to portions of the nervous system. My years in drama team, however, taught me that the impossible is still very much possible. Even now, as we enter the twilight of the 21st century, we as medical professionals have not been able to eliminate all of the side effects that come from incorporating cybernetic elements into our bodies. Of course, everyone is familiar with the mental disorder most commonly referred to as cyberpsychosis, but it doesn't end there. Although advances in medical science for the greater part of a century have reduced its incidence to a minimum, cyberware rejection can still occur in a small subset of the population. These unlucky few can experience a range of complications, but the following are the most prevalent. 1. Immune response. The body rejects the implant, causing scar tissue to continue growing to the point that it causes pain and inflammation of surrounding tissue, as well as possible interference with the text electrical circuits. 2. Psychological effects. Neurological implants have the potential to cause unpredictable change in the brain. Possible side effects include depression, apathy, uh, apathy hallucinations, and sudden increases in addictive behaviors, such as gambling. 3. Implant overdependence. Long-term use of certain synthetic body part replacements can change the brain's chemistry to make it accustomed to a particular type of implant. There are reported cases of permanent blindness after patients attempted to replace their Kiroshi optical implants with different models. In the face of these known risks, what should our outlook be as consumers and medical professionals? To deny ourselves cybernetic enhancements on the 0.5% chance we could lose our vision forever? Or gamble away our life savings at the casino? The clear answer is no. Cyberware technology has elevated human biology to the point where these what-if arguments serve against our best interest. The best advice I can offer for minimizing your risk is to read the te techno-medical profile for all cyberware you intend to purchase before you install it. Good grief, there's a lot of shit to read in this apartment. That's an interesting mural you have on the wall there, Judy. Let me get something to drink again. All that reading is making my mouth dry. Alright, I'll sit on the bed. Uh, I, I, I think it's best if I just leave her alone. Johnny, I think it's best if we just leave her alone for now. I don't want to go poking her, waking her up, or asking her questions when she's obviously in a lot of pain and distress right now. Judy would get extremely pissed off at me if I do that. I don't want to piss her off. So let's just leave Evelyn be. Have a seat. Okay. Uh, oh, okay, right here. Alright, roll it. Data was in pretty rough shape. Not all that editable. Huh. Glad you managed to salvage them in the first place. Needs a second to load. Alright. Quality's lousy. But I did what I could. Alright. You tried to remaster it the best you could. Just like I try to remaster these giantest videos I upload the best I can. Although I'm not using Topaz to remaster them, I'm using some app called the uh, Maya 2. Maya 2 app. There's a little button on there where you can enhance the image into HD quality. If you do it too many times, it makes the picture look like shit. But if you do it just the right amount of times, it makes the quality look decent enough. And I do mess with the saturation a little bit on the video too to enhance the color just what a tad bit. For? Every single piece of tech I see, security. We need a layout of the whole room. We will get everything else we need from the virtue. What about his messages? Only if you can do it and be parfait bourri. It's most important that he suspect nothing. Try to be your usual relaxed self. And if he starts talking about the biochip himself, uh, should I 
bioship? Where you hear this? That is not of interest to you. You spin the virtue, you come back here. We give you the eddies. That is your one job. The rest is none of your concern. Understand? Hmm. Okay. Let's go all the way back to the beginning. What am I looking at? What am I looking out for? Okay. Take a look around if you want. Okay. Who is this? Can't see your face. Under normal circumstances, that kind of encryption's easy to crack. But not this time. Whoever she is, she's got serious net running skills. Hmm. That or someone's working it for her. Alright, what is this? Hmm. I think I recognize these. What are they? Vive markings. You familiar with them? Not enough to know what they actually mean. Heard of who might use them though. Who? Could be the Voodoo Boys, but Voodoo this is a boys. hunch. Can't be a hundred percent sure. The spine chilling netrunner crew? Hard to find because they don't want to be. I wouldn't know Ooh. where to start. So they're a type of crew that likes to keep to themselves and don't like to be bothered. Uh oh. Sorry! Alright. Uh, let's switch layers. Anything in here? Uh. Okay. Okay. Uh, let's just. Fast forward, I guess. Starts talking about the biochip himself. Okay. Might not be important. Maybe. But all of them are from Pacifica. Now's down our search, at least. What now? Mm. Looks like I'm going on a field trip to Pacifica. Oh. That's quite a distance. <laughs> All right, that's it. All Here's right, the I think we got everything. I love the fact that in the recent updates, 1.5, 1.6, they made the braid dances a lot easier. Because if you guys and gals remember when I first started playing this game, that one brain dance I did before 1.5, I fucking hated brain dances so much. I hated them. Where now, after the updates, they're a lot easier to do and you also have the option to skip them if you don't want to do them so thank you CDPR for doing that by the way what do you think now I know why they tried to flatline her now we know what happened in clouds they're the ones who tried to flatline her Launched a nuke at her ship. So it was punishment? For getting played by her? She knew more than they thought she knew. Couldn't let that go. So that's who she was running from. Woman who hired Woman her. who hired Evelyn. Any idea who we're up against? Your guess is as good as mine. Shit. Sorry, V. It's fine. You don't know and I don't know. Evelyn's the only one that knows. Looks like Evelyn never told us the whole truth. You're telling me. If I'd known what she'd gotten herself into... Ugh, I'm so mad at her. Her only job was to record a virtue. It's 
Pretty damn amazing she managed to organize a full-blown heist. And swipe the biochip from under her boss's noses. So that's where you came in. She hired you. And brought this all on herself. On you two. There's one more recording. Okay. Wanna see it? Sure. Sure, why not? Nothing can surprise me at this point. Ah, uh, be careful what you say, V. You never know. You just never know. I mean, after all, you are the same guy with a implant in your head that eventually is going to kill you, unfortunately, unless you can get something done about it. And you also see the images of a man who has supposedly been dead for a very, very, very long time. Oui. Oui, allez. Okay. Il y a quelqu'un raison, moi, c'est tout intelligent pour ça. Protéger bien. On ne s'est pas enragé. On plie. C'est plus bon moyen de nous gagner pour nous arriver sur un autre bout. Me no understand what you are saying. Sorry. I'm not sure if that's Spanish, but if it is, me no hable espanol. I can't really speak Spanish. I don't know. Haitian Creole? It is the voodoo boys. No offense, but I... my... Wait, let me My see knowledge of Spanish is very limited. Meantime, you try to tune into the phone's frequency. See what the other side's saying. Okay. Uh oh. Let's rewind. Okay. Rewind. Oui. Oui, allez. Vous avez bien raison. Moi, c'est tout intelligent pour ça. Protéger bien. I had it. I had to twitch out because I got stuck. Okay. Got it. Give it a second. Okay. Heard her mention Yorinobu. Probably why Evelyn buried this recording deep. Caught another name. Something like... Silverhand? Johnny Silverhand. We have to know what they're saying. It could be important. Fine. Just found the auto-translate package. Should get along fine with your system. I'll install it now. Alright. Oui. Oui, allez. Vous avez raison, vous êtes tout intelligent pour ça, pour te y bien. Vous pensez que vous avez fait un problème? Vous n'avez pas enragé. En plus, c'est le plus bon moyen de nous gagner pour nous arriver sur un autre bout. Il faut que nous prenions cela. Ok. Top update it. Ok. Silverhand. 
There's only one silver hand I know, and that's Johnny. Okay, Judy, we're good. All right, disconnecting. So they want something to do with Johnny? Huh. It's hard to see when the screen gets dark. I don't have any lights on in my room besides the TV and the light on my PlayStation, of course, so it makes it kind of hard to see. I don't get hey, Johnny. It. What's this have to do with Johnny Silverhand? He died like forever ago. Yeah, but he's right hey, in front of you, you in my head. Idea? A biochip we stole. It's uh Might as well tell her the truth. Silverhand's engram burned onto it. Engram? Digitized psyche. Personality construct. AKA, I can see him and hear him. Can you give me a minute? I need to go over some stuff in my head. Uh, um, of course. Johnny, we need to talk. Know who they are, who the woman is. Any idea how we find them? Fuck, V. I've been dead the last half century. Sorry no if shit. I'm unable to hand you all the answers on a chrome fucking platter when you snap your fingers. These people, what could they want from Alt? How the hell should I know? Because they mentioned your fucking whatsoever. name! One way or another, everything leads back to that Netrunner. Finding her is our biggest priority. If she knows as much as I think she knows about the chip, she can help us out. I thought you said nothing could help us. Nah, just find us that Juju Wirehead, okay? Okay. Something right here. Bushido and Net Post Moderat Neo Post Moderism. Hmm. How funny it how funny it says Neo when I just got ta done talking to Neo himself. Uh, the Bushido franchise is a litmus test of our time. This groundbreaking film series puts on full display the entire spectrum of American society, masterfully pointing out the greatest problems of the neo-modern era. Live fast, die never was, in its own way, a generational manifesto on the affirmation of life. The use of vivid covers, or uh, vivid colors, excuse me, shaky cinematography, you ubiquitiosis sorry if I mispronounce that blood effect and persuasive brain splatter testifies to the extraordinary self awareness of the director, who once revealed in an interview how he fucking loves it when hot chicks dissect the shit out of the bad guys. Or dissect the shit out of the bad guys. Okay. Perhaps no other concept more openly describes more optically. Why do I keep butchering these words? Describes the underlying societal ethos. Hope I pronounced that correctly. When Bush, when Bushido 3 was released, especially worthy of note is the reputation in subsequent installments of the implant bomb motif, through the prism of which the protagonist reinterprets reality. One example was this convention's flawless implementation of players in the latest film in the series. Bushido X, Fade to Black. The scene in which the powerful Go... Goraya? Goraya? Sorry if I mispronounced that. Disembodies the arm of Jake, as played by the transcendent Tim Kelly. Demonstrates in brilliant form the, dual the duality of the human condition. On the one hand, Jake loses his cybernetic arm. A symbol of both his tragic past and the ongoing technical, techno ontological conflict within his psyche. On the other hand, it is precisely due to this dismemberment 
the Goraya is blown to bloody bits by the sensational explosion sequence. And the final disintegration of the antagonist's body into a blood spray of gore. How should this be interpreted? It is a metaphorical cry of deeply rooted despair, a manifestation of the personal transgression. This fragmentation of body could likewise be interpreted as a fragmentation of the individual mind, thus provoking the question, whose mind? Indeed, had everything the viewer seen of Jake's struggle been in fact a personified embodied fear? Had he not been embroiled in epic battle with a vile monster, but rather only with himself? Could the entirety of Jake's narrative been only a manifestation of some cyber-psychotic dream state? Among all the depth and nuance that has defined this franchise since its inception, only one thing is truly certain. Bushido has forever changed the world of cinema. Alright. Anything else? Okay. I'll take that. There are a lot of things to read in this apartment. Guest Editorial Braindance editors have long strived to strike a balance between real, lived experience and technological exp experiential purity. The more heavily processed the material, the more abstract the pathways, the clearer the Braindance recording. These fundamental elements of design have guided editors since the first wave of brain-to-brain -brain experience sharing technology took hold. In the pursuit of balance, however, editors have clearly showed a bias for purity over naturalism over the years, even going so far to use it as a pain of, as a point of pride. Why did I say pain? Point of pride in the quality of their production. But in the industry's latest push for greater purity, has the purpose of the technology already been forgotten? Will we not find ourselves processing and filtering a brain dance recording to the point that the emotional experience no longer extends beyond what we receive from film, television, and video games? After reliving some of the latest titles on my feeder unit, this once academic question now feels all too inevitable with the industry's current trajectory. For a moment, let's consider why some reports suggest more and more users are searching for unlicensed titles on the black market, so-called black brain dances, extreme brain dances, or XBDs. Are we so sure it's the illicit content they are after? Or maybe the real draw is the, the residual grit we editors try so hard to remove. Distracting thoughts, irrelevant memories, loose associative threads, emotions stretching beyond the desired spectrum. What if this noise is not so superfluous as we believe it to be? What if these peripheral experiences how hold the potential to elevate a good brain dance to an exquisitic one. We do ourselves a disservice by not exploring these questions before a blind crusade for brain dance purity leads this industry straight into the bin of obsolete flash in the pan technology. JA Relive.it, the quarterly magazine for brain dance editors, amateurs, and enthusiasts, volumes four volume four out of seventy eight, excuse me, December twenty seventy six. My oh my, it's an ugly day outside in Night City. Now, I've been recording for quite some time. I think I'm almost at an hour here. Wait. Hey, Judy. You got any idea how to get in touch with the Voodoo Boys? Uh... I'll ask I'll around. I'll ask around. Make a few calls. Let me put it this way. The Voodoo Boys wouldn't trust a cat if it walked onto their turf. But someone's got to know a way in. Well, good luck. I hope you won't need it. Well, I know one thing. It's going to be very dangerous going in game territory. Thanks. Thanks, Judy. No, V. Thank you. You're a... You're a good person. Evelyn could never see what was under people's skin. If she could have gotten to know you a bit better, then... Who knows? Things might have turned out differently. Who knows? It was nice helping you and Evelyn out, Judy. Okay, I can't go in there. Alright. I'll leave you to be. Wait a fucking minute. 
Wait a fucking minute. Oh my god. Wait a fucking minute. Oh my god, this is the place. This is the fucking This is the place from the anime. This is the place from the anime. I, I, I guess it's okay for me to say this. I hope it's not too much of a spoiler. I said I didn't want to spoil anything, but I think this should be okay to say. This is Lucy's apartment from the anime. This is her apartment right here. Because I remember a shot in one of the episodes where they showed an area just like this and all this writing was on the wall. These exact words right here were on the wall with the robot and everything. This is Lucy's apartment. Except in the game, it just leads to outside. It just leads to outside in the game. In the anime, in the anime, I shit you not, this is another room. Unless I gotta go up? No, this leads to the roof. And this leads down into the street. I'm not, I'm not shooting you. I'm being honest to God. That door right there in the anime leads to a room that is Judy's room in the anime. I might put a, um, I, I might put a spoiler here in the video, a spoiler warning in case you want to skip. Holy shit, she's right next to Judy's apartment. This is where Lucy lived in the anime. Hey. Hey, Claire. I don't think I know you. I'm Claire. You might not remember me. Bartender at the afterlife? Uh-oh. Forgot to close my tab? <laughs> Bar has a buzz about you lately. As the merc who's reliable gets things done. And since I need help... Okay. Need a driver for street races. Oh! Okay. Hell yeah, Arroyo, that sounds good. In Arroyo, on Valley. Lovely spot, you can't miss it. Alright, I'll try not to. If I'm not there when you arrive, just hang. I'll show up after my shift at the after. Okay, see you, Claire. Alright. Street races, hell yeah! I don't mind street racing in this game. Dude, I can't believe it's... I can't believe it's right here. That's fucking insane. Sweet! Alright. Hello! Oh. Hello. Mm-hmm. Excuse me. I was about to say, I hope you're not breaking anything. And it's still ugly outside. Wow. Let me head across the street. Oh yeah, this is definitely, this is 100% the place. All right, let me open up the map. Beat on the brack right there. Meet with Takamura. He's probably pissed off I haven't talked to him in a long time. Side job, go to the afterlife. Side job, side job, side job. All right. Oh my god, there's a lot of side jobs. Lots and lots of side jobs. And main story stuff, of course, you know. This stuff right here. Well, not that, but... This one, that's 
fully lit up, these are main story missions. Uh, how do I get it? Oh, that zooms in. Okay. Main story mission, main story mission, and then everything else is side stuff. Then I got a whole bunch of gigs and cyber psycho sightings throughout the city. Man, oh man, oh man. Well, unfortunately, that's going to do it here for this Let's Play video. Well then. That's going to do it for this Let's Play video of Cyberpunk 2077. I did a lot of reading in this Let's Play video more than I did in main story stuff. But nonetheless, hope you all enjoyed this Let's Play video. And I will see you in future videos here on the channel. I'm going to go do a dice roll to determine what I'm going to record next. Because it's not too late. I guess I will record one more thing tonight. But anyways, thank you all so much for watching. And until next time... K on Gaming HD signing out. Peace and have a great rest of the day or nighttime, depending on when you see this.